Hey, this is John Ornberg, and I'm so glad to get to talk to you for a few moments. We are a kind of community of folks online that are looking for God, that will surrender to him, will say, God, I can't lead my life, but you can, so I want to turn it over to you. You may have no background in religious faith at all. You're just thinking through things. And I'm particularly glad if that's the case right now. We're spending a couple of weeks thinking about questions. And uh, so many of you have sent in questions. I hope you keep on sending them. Uh, if you do that, uh, one quick word. We are shifting uh, tech vehicles. I'm one of the least tech people I know. But we are going to send links that will connect you directly to the YouTube version of this video. We also have a website. Um, but sometimes trying to get to a particular talk when it comes through the website was making it hard. People had to do a bunch of different clicks or they couldn't share it with somebody or didn't know how to make comments. So we have gone back to uh, sending the link by YouTube and we'll keep figuring stuff out as we go along. The question I want to think about today is a big one, might take a little while. Somebody asked, is there a difference between faith and trust? And I want to take that question as an opportunity to talk about a number of words that are really central, not just to a life of faith in God, whether or not that's where you consider yourself, but really to how do our mind works? How do we relate to reality? How do we proceed through life? There's an old statement you may know from the Bible that the righteous, good people will live by faith, but the unrighteous will too. Everybody will live by faith when we understand what faith is. So it'll take a little while to unpack all this, but it's really important. Here we go. Let's start with the word belief. Uh, a belief is a tendency, a disposition to act as though something were true. And our mind are filled, minds are filled with beliefs. You may have examined some, we may have not. I might think I believe something, and then uh, when push comes to shove, when it's time to act, I, I don't actually believe in it. I mentioned I went paragliding last week with my uh, son and my son-in-law, and I had lots of beliefs about the fact that the pilot was trustworthy and the chute would work and I would be perfectly safe. Uh, but when I was running off the cliff for a few moments, there were parts of my body that was not certain about this. So belief is kind of a tricky thing, but we live at the mercy of our beliefs. We all carry with us a mental map about the way that things are. Well, I believe in gravity, and that's part of why if I want to step off a cliff, i got to make sure that the shoot actually works. I don't have to drum up uh, uh, conviction around that one. I, I, it's just simply in my mental map. And we live at the mercy of our mental maps. We all have beliefs, and we operate by them. And then there is knowledge. Now, knowledge is when I am thinking, representing, speaking about something as it actually is, accurately, on the basis of adequate evidence or adequate reason. So it doesn't count as knowledge if I make a lucky guess about something, but if I've thought it through and looked carefully at it, and it is as I'm representing it in my mind, then I know it. Can you believe in something and be wrong about it? Of course you can. Um, you do it every day. I do it every day. People who love me remind me about that. Can you know something and be wrong about it? No. Uh, you can be adamantly convinced and be wrong. You can be uh, quite certain. I have a friend who says he is often wrong but never uncertain. Uh, you can be certain about something and be wrong. You cannot know something and be wrong about it because that's the nature of knowledge. Uh, to know something is to think about it, to represent it as it actually is. And this is fundamental. It's often a matter of confusion in our day. Knowledge is critical to life. If I'm going to take my, uh, my car into a mechanic, I want it to be to a mechanic who has knowledge. If I'm going to have somebody operate on my head, where they're getting in underneath the skin, into the skull area. I don't want them to be lucky. I don't want them just to have beliefs. I want them to have knowledge. And it is possible for human beings to have knowledge. And then there's uh, faith. Now, faith is uh, when I depend on something or rely on something. Trust and faith are basically synonyms. They basically mean the same thing. And uh, we cannot live apart from faith. 
That's why it's not just the righteous that live by faith, the unrighteous do too. There's a good chance right now you are sitting in a chair. If you are doing that, you are depending on that chair. You are relying on that chair. You are probably not keeping most of your weight on your feet just in case the chair collapses. You're depending on the fact that it won't collapse. It might. Your trust in that chair might not be well-founded, but we cannot live without trust or without faith. I mentioned that we're changing... Uh, delivery systems for technology right now. I trust in technology. I trust on my computer. When I turn it on, it's going to be on. I trust in YouTube. Uh, we cannot live any other way than by faith. Faith is not opposed to knowledge. You know, this starts to get real important as we think about Jesus and uh, uh, our belief in God. So, uh, sometimes people will think that religion um, or spiritual and moral claims have nothing to do with knowledge, that knowledge is just restricted to certain fields like science or like math. But, of course, we cannot live that way. Uh, I have to live on the basis of knowing what is right or what is wrong. Sometimes you can know something and at least temporarily not even believe it. Uh, and we'll see this uh, occasionally with people. Somebody is texting while they're driving and they get in an accident or drinking while they're driving and then they get into an accident. And afterwards, we will say something that our mothers taught us to say when we were quite young. You knew better. Not just you believe better. You knew, but somehow we're able to hide what we know from ourselves, at least for certain periods of time. Now, uh, this is a really, really important aspect of uh, the Bible. When the Bible talks about a word that's often translated belief, the New Testament, the Greek word for it is pistis, uh, it almost always ought to be translated trust. There was just one word in New Testament Greek that covers both believing, what are those ideas that I'm prepared to act as if they were true, and then trusting, that is, those things that I am willing to depend on, that I, as an act of will, depend, depend on. And that's that word, uh, pistis. And so, for instance, at the end of the Gospel of John, John writes, Jesus performed many other signs which are not recorded in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. And the idea there is not if you can just get yourself to affirm something, then God will let you into heaven or be pleased with you. The idea is that you will be able to actually trust in him the way that you trust in that chair where you're sitting or that light switch that you flip on. And then just like the chair supports you and the light comes on when you flip that switch, Jesus will support you because he is real, because he is true, and because uh, trusting in that which is trustworthy is the way that we navigate reality. At the end of John's letter, 1 John chapter 5, John writes, it's so interesting, I write these things to you who believe, that is trust, in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. Belief is not opposed to knowledge. Faith is not opposed to knowing. And all through the Bible, there is a connection. We are able to come to know that which we believe. In fact, when Jesus defines eternal life in John chapter 17, verse 3, he says, this is eternal life, that people may come to know the Father. And knowing the Father, there's um, not just knowing that. It's not like knowing that 2 plus 2 is 4, knowing that water boils at 212 degrees. To know a person is a kind of knowing, even though knowing by acquaintance is different than knowing that. It is a life of interactive engagement with, participation with, talking to, being guided by, being in love with the Father. And that is eternal life, that kind of knowing. And then there is commitment. Now, commitment is an act of the will. Commitment is when I make a decision about a course of action that I will take. Marriage is one of those examples of a commitment that we make, making a promise to somebody. That's a commitment that I make by an act of the will. And so there is belief. I'm prepared to act as though something is true. There is knowledge. 
when I'm representing it, thinking about it accurately as it really is on the basis of good evidence, there is faith or trust when I depend on something, even though I'm finite and I'm not in control, I am vulnerable to it, I depend on it, and then there is commitment. I make a promise, I set my course. Every human being has to live by belief and through knowledge and by faith and through commitment. We will all commit ourselves to something. We are that way. If I commit myself to the wrong thing, ultimately that becomes something like an addiction. Um, it is tragic. We perish if we commit ourselves to the wrong thing because it will betray us in the end. Uh, now I'll say a word about how all of that is arranged in our minds. There was a um, psychologist named Milton Rokic years ago, and he talked about the organization of beliefs and attitudes. And so, and I have done a picture of this. Uh, it is terribly inelegant, and I don't know if you'll be able to read it on this or not. But the idea is when it comes to beliefs, there will be what is absolutely ultimate. Uh, for Descartes, you might remember his statement when he was looking for what can I count on, what is true for sure. I think, therefore I am. Cogito, or however it's pronounced, ergo sum. So uh, there is what is foundational, and then there are certain beliefs that are central, and other beliefs that are significant, but they're not nearly as core, and then other ones that are quite peripheral that are not particularly stable. The, the more central a belief is, the more stable, the more resistant to change, and the more that it impacts everything else. And I want my beliefs to be true above all. I want something that I can count on in my beliefs. And for Israel, it was this. Hear, O Israel, Deuteronomy 6, 4. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. That's the belief. That's the reality. That's the truth that, that will not let you down that you can count on. And then my desires are also arranged in a kind of web or a kind of system like that. Eleanor Stump writes about that in her book, Wandering in Darkness, that we all have um, at the absolute center of our being an ultimate desire, what she calls the desire of the heart. And that phrase is taken from Psalm 37 verses 4 and 5, where God says that he loves to give us the desires of our heart when we come to love him. And when it comes to my desires, again, there'll be other desires that are uh, central and then significant and then ones that are really quite low. Uh, it's good to pay attention to my ultimate desire. If I make the wrong thing my ultimate desire, it will ultimately enslave me. The Bible's word for that is idolatry, or that becomes a form of addiction. Um, because I want that which cannot satisfy me. And what the Bible teaches is that God, to know God because of his goodness and his beauty and his strength and all of creation that his, is his gift to us, uh, God himself, is to be the ultimate desire of our heart, union with him, to be loved by God, to be cared for by God, to be forgiven by God, uh, is to be the ultimate desire of our hearts. And no other desire um, uh, can satisfy us. And then uh, commitments are the same way. There will be some commitment that is my ultimate commitment. And the way that I can tell that is, if two different commitments collide, which one wins? So I have a commitment to be thin. I also have a commitment to enjoy Twinkies. And they collide with each other. Which one wins? That will tell me. And, and Jesus' invitation to discipleship is to follow me, to make your ultimate commitment following me. Because any other commitment that you make will ultimately betray you if it causes you to betray me, to not follow me. But if you follow me, if you give yourself wholly to me, if you trust in me, because I am the creator of all that is real. If you seek me first, then all these other things will be added to you. So that's faith and trust and a whole lot more thrown in. And those are terribly important, uh, not just to people who consider themselves religious people or people of faith, but every human being. So today, I would invite you to, to spend some time reflecting on um, what is the ultimate belief that I'm counting on to be real? And then, uh, as honest as I can be about it, what's my ultimate desire? What's the thing that would break my heart if ultimately I were not able to have it? And then, what is the ultimate 
commitment that I am making. And I'll give you one more thought to think about as you're reflecting on all of that. This is just speaking for me. When it comes to beliefs, I have lots of doubts. I have lots of questions. There are many things that I do not know. We live in an age where belief in God, belief in the supernatural for a variety of reasons is often hard for lots and lots of us. But I'll tell you what I know. I know that when it comes to committing my one and only life, because I have to commit it to something, I have to put it on some foundation. I have to uh, pursue something ultimate. I know for me, there is no commitment that rivals commitment to Jesus. And so I just invite you to think about that. What's your ultimate commitment? And um, I hope you make it really well. Hope you live it out today. I'm going to work on it too. And I hope I get to see you tomorrow.